Hey, this is Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com, and just wanted to share with you guys a little thing I'm trying out. I reached out to my Twitter fans, friends, followers, whatever you want to call them, and said, hey, should we post a tutorial on lip sync in Toon Boom Harmony today? And we got a lot of love. We got seven retweets and four favorites and a couple of replies. And my way of saying thank you is jumping over to Toon Boom Harmony. So I'll click play and show you what this tutorial is going to be about. Organic water and ice, please. Organic water and ice, please. All right, so this is our character Camper from Anatomy of a 30 Second Short, and that is available right now. But enough about that. Let me show you exactly how we use Toon Boom Harmony's automatic lip sync. It is awesome. So not, am I, not only am I going to show you that, I'm going to show you the shortcuts that I use. So what I want to do is simply go up to File, and let's go ahead and reopen this. Don't save. All right, so what you're seeing here is the full scene from Anatomy of a 30 Second Short. And what all does this look like? Not so fun multiplane stuff going on, but that's not what we're talking about today. So let me undo that, turn off my animate button. And I'm going to zoom in here to the bar to focus on camper. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off the bartender as well as the bounty. And just in case you're wondering, the uh, bounty is uh, part werewolf, part Bigfoot. So, but enough about that. So to use the automatic lip sync, you have to have pretty decent, clean sound and we actually have that pulled from our file in Audacity. There's multiple layers here, but uh, we're just going to import Camper's layer. So what I want to do is simply go up to File, come down to Import, and select Sound. and go to all my support files folder and I'm going to bring in camper01.wave and I'll click open. So if you look right now we have a new layer and we see our waveform here. Now a few things about this layer. Uh, this little 100% has nothing to do with volume. It has to do with how large the waveform is and how large that's going to be on your timeline. Now I'm not going to do Camper's full phrase here. Um, I'm just going to do that first opening line where she asks for organic water and ice because in the future I imagine you're going to have to do that. Anyway, um, so I think that's going to stop at about frame 60. So I'll make sure all of my layers extend at least that far. So I'm going to hold on my shift key. And then I want to extend my exposure. So I'll simply do F5. I'll just click insert. And I'll also go up to my scene length. So scene, scene length, and I'll just make this 60 just for our example here. Okay, so now that we have that done, I want to go ahead and I'll select Camper's mouth. And I'll zoom in here. And if I look over at my library, in my substitution area, you can see the different mouth drawings that we have and all the drawing substitutions. These are the different phonemes that are drawn out. 
And I think we have about eight or nine, maybe even 11. But each one of these drawings goes by a frame number. Okay, now that's important because that's part of my little shortcut, if you will. So what I wanna do now, I'm going to right click on my sound layer and right at the base here, you'll see a little menu that says lip sync. So I wanna select auto lip sync detection. All right, so we just saw all that happen. So I'll right click here again and I'll go to lip sync and come to map lip sync. All right, now this is where naming your layers becomes very important because we actually have three different characters in the scene, even though I'm only showing you one. There are three characters in the scene, so I have to be careful and name my layers accordingly. So I just can't have three different layers called mouth because, well, you can't duplicate naming of your layers and it's a little bit confusing. That being said, I do know I have to find camper's mouth. So I'm gonna cancel out of this real quick and go to camper's layer here. And I know in her upper body, there's several layers here I'm looking for. There's the head layer. Let's keep scrolling down. And there is the mouth. Now, another way I could have actually checked that was just simply selecting this and looking over at my drawing substitutions, and it tells me what the layer name is. All right, so let's scroll all the way back up to the top to our sound, right click, go to lip sync, and select map lip sync. And we have the sound layer, the source, which is camper 01, and the destination layer, I wanna look and find mouth. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down and there we go. Now, this isn't in alphabetical order, but it's actually following the order of the layers that are down here on our timeline. Now, when it comes to mapping, usually when my partner, Chris Cartledge, draws out the characters, he follows Toon Boom's example of how the phonemes should be set up and in what order. So even though if you look at our mouth layer, the frames were numbered one, two, three, four, and five, and so on, we can still use those here. So I'll just go ahead and change out these letters and just type in the numbers accordingly. Okay. Now, of course, these are the different phonemes and it's not saying that B or number two is actual B sound. These are just the different mouth shapes that are used. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, if you notice, Camper's mouth just moved right there at the end. And if I scroll all the way down to her mouth layer, you can see these little lines that have popped up. And that's because we have mapped the automatic lip sync to the mouth layer. So if I play this. Organic water and ice, please. Okay. And that's not bad. There are a few things I do want to change. First and foremost, at the very end, there seems to be some extra movement here. So I'll just scrub my playhead. All right. So I'll click here and I can change this drawing um, several different ways. I can use my perimeters here and move to a different drawing or I can go up to drawing substitutions and do this here or just use my bracket keys with open and close bracket and that can move up and down the timeline with the drawing substitutions.
So the last one, we'll go ahead and make that a number one as well. So if I play this again, I'm going to scrub. Now she's saying organic, and I think I do want to change that shape to make it look a little more of an O. And at organic, so the G, I'm going to change the shape again. And for that last little part, we're going to change it out once more. So now if I click play. Organic water and ice, please. Organic water and ice, please. Organic water and ice, please. So with just a few tweaks, we've got a pretty decent lip sync. And all we needed to do is make sure our character voice is a pretty clean sound with no noise in the background. We imported that and then we asked for a automatic lip sync detection and then we simply mapped that detection to our mouth layer. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Be sure to like and share. And if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be posting a lot of different tutorials coming up. And if you like this lip sync tutorial, there's a lot more about lip sync in our new title, Anatomy of a 30 Second Short. And that's about Camper, the intergalactic bounty hunter. So in that short, we're going to be showing you how exactly we went about not only doing the lip sync, how we even created all of the lip sync, working with the script, uh, working with programs like Audacity, giving vocal effects to certain characters, and how do you even actually separate all of that sound and bring it into Toon Boom Harmony without getting crossed up anywhere. And that is available now. You can either click directly on the screen or click below in the description. This has been Tony Ross for TonyTeach.com. Remember, keep it simple. Make it perfect. If you don't have time to make it perfect, rethink the idea. Have a good one.